But we're actually trying to get a push in Florida through that because I noticed that Texas, there was just a, uh, I just posted about it on LinkedIn today, but I got a, a few of the articles I subscribed to. They sent me some articles and apparently there's two Texas liquor companies and, and retail chains mm -hmm. that have put their own D9 beverages in about uh, plus 400 store, storefronts. Wow. So that's eventually going to happen in here in Florida Absolutely. and I'm pushing for it. everybody in the audience <laughs> all right so henry how we doing man I'm doing good man getting a lot of uh, one -on one time huh a lot of one -on one don't time. mind at all we're gonna keep it going let's get into it exactly um so to kick off our discussion today um can you provide a brief overview of the growing popularity of what kind of called i guess the minor cannabinoids a cbn cbg and cbc in the market first of all these are just a few of them there's there's a hundred and something, but because it's still schedule one, there's only been about like 80 that have been found, cannabinoids in general. And I'm mm -hmm. really excited for them to get dropped on the schedule because it just allows for more research because some of the specific ones that I, uh, I'm going to speak about today are really, really cool. Um, you know, obviously the most popular one and the one that's called the mother of all cannabinoids is called CBG. Sure. Uh, and all of the ones that I'm going to talk about today are non-psychoactive whatsoever. They just have different, you know, inner body and um, outer body sensations, you know, that can really, you know, either heal Certain types, I'm not going to say diseases, but certain pains, inflammations, sure. you know, anti-depression, anti mm -hmm. um, that type of stuff. But the first one I'm going to start with is called uh, CBN. It's actually one of my favorites because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm somebody with insomnia and I've always used either, okay. you know, the, the marijuana plant or some of the other cannabinoids to aid with sleep. Sure. And one of the ones that I like the most is CBN because it's non-psychoactive and it also allows... Um, to function in a way like melatonin. I don't know if you've ever taken melatonin or... I have not. My daughter does. But yeah, but it like, works for her. So, for example, melatonin, you wake up the next day and you kind of... Not that you feel terrible, but you feel a little bit groggy. A little groggy, a little yeah. behind, and it's like it takes a little bit extra to start your day. Absolutely. CBN does the same thing that melatonin does, except mm -hmm. that it is stronger, mm -hmm. and it also makes you feel the next day like you got better sleep, and you actually wake up not feeling groggy, and it's like you have that like straight out of bed jump, like you have the most nice. important meeting of your life, and you just kind yeah. of jump out. <laughs> and get the day started and it's one of my favorite ones because it is effective i remember i went to a show back in 2022 called the cbd wholesale show um and i got some cbn products and i never heard about it before i did a little bit of research and i was like ah screw it. you know i'll test them out tonight had no reason to do i just took the gummies to take them sure next thing i know i take them i take them at 9 p.m 20 minutes pass and i knock out right. i wake up the next i wake up at like 5 a.m 6 a.m like what the hell happened? But that's how potent they are, but I felt sure. amazing. You felt rested. Yeah. One yeah. of the other ones is CBG. This is one of the most important ones. It's uh, it's called the mother of all cannabinoids because it's the strongest one. Okay. And CBG is kind of like, uh, it supports like well-being throughout the day. So it's kind of like the opposite of CBN. CBN is like a night one. CBG is a during the day. Um, some, some people use CBG as like a caffeine replacement. Okay. Just like anti-depression and it kind of gives you some of you to take cbg gummies before the gym sure even in the beverage market there's been a lot of companies mixing energy drinks with just cbg not even like delta 9 or any of the products to get you high and right it's one that i've used i wish i used it a little bit more but i've honestly just been lazy to order products uh <laughs> online and then uh the last and second one it's kind of like a secondary one to cbg mm -hmm. Not that popular and not that many people know about it, but I know a lot of the big chemists and scientists in the space talk about it all the time and can't wait for its popularity to kind of emerge uh, compared to the other ones, which is called CBC. Okay. And that one helps. And I actually just looked it up a little bit before because I don't know as much as I should about it, but is what it is. Um, it, it helps with uh, anti-depression and uh, neuro uh, protectiveness. And I don't exactly know what neural protection means, okay. but I really want to look into it and discover it a little bit more because, you know, I come from a neuroscience background, sure. studied a lot of, you know, mental diseases and, and mental health issues. And I think if CBC is what it is with the little that I read, I don't want to state anything and get anybody excited. I think it could be another really good product to help with uh, the mental uh, the mental health crisis that, that oh, the U.S. Cool. is going through right now. Absolutely. So what are some of the various applications of these cannabinoids in industries such as health and wellness, beauty, and even pet care? I know this stuff can be used in all of those ways. Yeah, beauty, I wish a little bit, I wish a little, uh, I knew a little bit more because mm -hmm. the, the effect that, see, CBN's not, not going to have any, any of that in beauty, but the mm -hmm. effect that CBG and CBC, some of these other cannabinoids can have on skin is insane. So I can only imagine sure. the type of effect they could have for like anti-aging mm -hmm. uh, and that type of stuff. You might, it might be a good conversation for drew as well because he's involved in the nman and kind of the anti yeah. uh, aging and i've been telling him hey keep an eye out right because the second those uh, nutraceutical and nootropic companies for cosmetics 
find out about this, the popularity of this product, they're going to combine them together and it's going to open up a whole entire new industry and uh, um, you know niche for himself. And then when it comes to CBN with health and wellness, I mean, I mentioned it earlier, you know, the wellness piece is, you know, just getting better sleep, man. I mean, at right. the end of the day, especially if you're one of those consumers and, you know, I have friends, you know, I have associates and there's a lot of people that got started consuming marijuana mm -hmm. at a very young age and have a lot of issues getting off of it to get sleep because sure. you get that insomnia piece and CBN is a perfect way to replace that. But none of the doctors and the pharmaceutical companies are going to tell you, not yet, but I think they will um, in the future. And then CBG, health and wellness, I mean, that's that's probably the, the most popular one in that right. specific category just because of the during, because when you think of health and wellness products, it's when you're awake, it's when you're in your day. And that's the one that has the most effect. And I know that it's not that popular in athletics, um, and kind of like gym, the gym kind of environment and ecosystem. But I think it's going to be one of the most popular ones in beverages and in like a uh, 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 pre-workout and, you know, the next, you know, I'd say five years. Um, what about kind of you touched on it a little bit, but let's get a little deeper into like compliance challenges when it comes to these minor cannabinoids. What are the kind of the, what's the regulatory landscape with these right now? Luckily, these ones are under CBD. Okay. And I think there's only like one, I mean, they're all under the CBD and hemp, but the, I think we're at a point now that there's a difference between like the health and wellness side and kind of like the recreational side of hemp and CBD. Sure, yeah. All of these products are on the health and wellness. So I think, uh, no, I believe, and, and I know actually, I just don't know off the top of my mind, there's only like one or two states that don't allow CBD and they mm. have the same exact type of compliance. So it's allowed in like 48, 49 states all across the US. Right. You can sell it anywhere and it doesn't fall under the same compliance as some of the other favorite ones that I have like THCA, sure, and Delta right, right. 8, and D9, THCV, THCP. I can literally name all of them, but I'm not going to. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So what are some, just from your experience, yeah. what are some concerns um, or common questions that people have, or that consumers have regarding it's, these things. Yeah, it's mostly, I mean, funny enough, we've gotten to our, uh, ourselves here at TouchRate and some of the other uh, relationships that we work with outside of here, we've gotten to ourselves to a really good place with CBG. Mm -hmm. I remember four or five years ago when I was first kind of getting started into the minor cannabinoids and not some of the, the, the more popular ones that kind of had that surge. Um, CBG, it was so hard to get it approved. Right. I, I have no idea why. It still boggles me today. It still right. keeps me at, keep, keeps me up at night sometimes. And then CBN is the one I mentioned. That one is, uh, when it comes to fears, it's just getting it approved, man. But luckily, we found the homes. I'll take it now. So the issues in getting it approved aren't that hard. But again, it was with some of those homes where, you know, we have a home where it can do everything that they're asking for except CBN. But then we have another home that can't do any of the other products, but it can do CBN. So it's still kind gotcha. of like a pick and choose with CBN. Mm -hmm. But luckily we have the right home now that can take the whole entire demographic of the, the hemp space and hemp derived space and the minor cannabinoids and uh, onboard it as it is. So it's gotcha. not, it isn't an issue as much anymore. And, you know, I used to hear it a lot more in the uh, three years ago, but today, luckily, um, you know, TouchSuite has really positioned itself um, to be a really a, a phenomenal home for, for CBD and hemp. You know, I didn't feel like that, you know, maybe five or six years ago, but sure. nobody was. Right. But luckily, you know, some of the lobbyists, fulfillment centers, uh, laboratories, scientists that have come in here and kind of sort of walked around and updated us. Um, and luckily with the COO and the VP of uh, risk that we have, um, they're very open to listening to people on the outside that are experts and then uh, transitioning that information to underwriting. And it's like, it's not a party, but it's kind of like something fun when they come in because we always learn something imagine. new. Sure. And then we yeah. grab those guys, we decline, and we're like, hey, by the way, we actually talked to the experts. Are you interested in coming back in? And uh, luckily, you know, we have really good relationships with everybody in, in hemp and CBD. I honestly haven't come across one negative one, which is crazy. Um, and usually when we reach out to them, they're more than willing to either put an insurance mid or, you know, to, to, to retry to apply through us. Right. Well, I know it's also super important because we've talked about this before to kind of stay ahead of the curve on where things are. Um, compliance wise and everything in order to be able to not, not just, just to be able to get people approved and stuff but to continue to educate oh yeah um, your, your partners and stuff like that on on where things are where things are going as well especially for revenue generation too yeah. i mean the, like I, I cannot wait and this is happening in the d9 market we spoke about before they're getting into the big liquor distribution right um but we're actually trying to get a push in florida through that because i noticed that texas there's just a uh, I just posted about it on LinkedIn today, but I got a few of the articles I subscribed to. They sent me some articles, and apparently there's two Texas liquor companies and, and retail chains mm -hmm. that have put their own D9 beverages in about uh, plus 400 store storefronts. Wow. So that's eventually going to happen in here in Florida, Absolutely. and I'm pushing for it, and I just posted about the Alternative Products Expo. Um, I work with the uh, ZJ Events, the company above them, phenomenal people, and I'm trying to get as many D9 beverages to that show. We're going to be there too, and a lot of the other companies we work with. Right. But because of how many people walk the floor that are smoke shop owners, health and wellness, 
But to get back to, to your original question, that's for the D9 on CBG and uh, CBN and CBC. I can't wait until the clinics, the medical clinics, the doctor's office. And there's some right. ready to do it. Sure. With the, some of the physical therapy places I've gone. But also like the spas, the health and wellness chains. Absolutely. I don't know if Walgreens and any of those are ever going to touch it. They don't need to. Their, their margins right. are awesome. But um, oh, well, they're low, but they make a lot of money. But I can't wait till those companies get in because not we not only are we going to be able to help them on the other point you brought up, mm -hmm. but on the revenue generating point. Absolutely. Where we can reach out because we work with tons of spas already on the low risk end. We work with a ton of doctors' office, physical therapy places, and the second that that opens up to them, I can grab a bunch of these CBN and CBG products that are best of, out of the best in the industry mm -hmm. and just start introducing them and not only, you know, kill it on the payment processing side and be the best home for them, but also be like, hey, by the way. Not only are we giving you the best service and the best rates, we're also going to go ahead and, and increase your revenue. Because at the end of the day, when any of these companies, we increase their revenue, mm -hmm. if they're taking more credit cards and they're running more credit cards, we right. make our fee on it. Absolutely. So we take course. an opposite look sure. to it, which is why not increase all of our revenues everywhere, make you freaking rich right. while also making ourselves rich but by earning the right to. Absolutely.